Texture is a topic that gets discussed a lot in color grading, but it's also one of the most misunderstood and misapplied tools of our craft. So today we're going to talk about how I use a particular texture tool within DaVinci Resolve, the Texture Pop tool, and talk about some rules for implementing it successfully and more than anything for using it invisibly. Remember, when we're color grading, the moment someone knows you are doing something, meaning an end viewer, when they can tell that your hand has been on the material, you're no longer doing whatever you thought you might be able to achieve. If people can spot what you're doing, you're failing at your task as a colorist. So whatever we do, we wanna do invisibly. It's especially important with manipulation of texture because it's so very easy to make a shift that maybe on the surface pulls off what you're trying to accomplish, but also renders that sort of worked on look. So we're gonna talk about some strategies for how we can employ texture and specifically the texture pop tool that are gonna get us a meaningful change in the texture of our image in a way that feels organic and invisible to the end viewer. Before we dive into Resolve, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, make sure that you do. We got lots of cool color grading content coming out here on the channel every single week. Two new videos a week, a live Q&A on Fridays, lots of fun stuff. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you turn on your notifications. All right, let's talk about the texture pop tool. So what are we looking at right now? What do I got going on? I have a timeline of various images, pretty nicely shot images, pretty good looking stuff. You'll notice there's a lot of faces in these images and that's the first thing that i'll point out for me personally i'm mostly using the texture pop tool in resolve to finesse the texture of skin yes you can use it for other purposes you might use it in a commercial workflow to sharpen or to tune the texture of a particular dish or a beverage those are things that you certainly could use it for i tend to simply use mid-tone detail or simpler tools in those settings texture pop to me it's a more complicated tool and really where that extra complexity is worth the trouble is when we're trying to finesse the texture of a person's skin because we are so very sensitive to that uh, as viewers so let's talk about how we use that tool uh, on a shot like this one so i'm actually going to go forward i'm going to skip to this second shot here i want to talk about this shot so I've got my template node tree set up here. And just before I dive in, I should give a little bit of context. We've got some color management set up. So we have a camera log image that has already been color managed out into a proper reproduction state. You can see the camera log original versus the reproduction. That color management is what's doing the main lift there. If you're not familiar with color management, check out the other content we have here on the channel on that subject to get straight on exactly what I'm doing here today. And the only other thing that I've done uh, thus far is I have a look happening over here at the timeline level of my node graph. This look is built from uh, a couple of the different components from my Voyager LUT pack. And it's just giving me kind of a creative starting point for my image. You can see that when I go off and then on, it's changing around my colors, it's changing around my contrast, it's giving me all kinds of goodness and a better creative foundation than I would have had with those things turned off. So we're going to be grading underneath this look and within this color management pipeline for our whole discussion on texture pop today. Now, let's go back to this shot and look at what we would typically do within this shot. So if I were to work through sort of my normal fundamental adjustments here of like messing with exposure, and then going through ratio and balance, something uh, that we can think about using texture pop for is when I look at this shot, my initial assessment is like, okay, the contrast feels a little bit spicy. It's not like we're clipping anything out, but it just feels a little bit slammed. And I feel like I want to kind of pump the brakes and pull back on that just a little bit. And I definitely could, I could go to my contrast pivot and just open things up a little bit. And that's literally all I was itching for right there. So before and then after just that little bit of uh, reduction in overall contrast. And let me shrink my clips down for you here so you can see this a little bit bigger. So that's what I was looking for and I've accomplished it pretty well with my contrast node. But one way that we can think about using texture in maybe a more nuanced or a more varied way than simply as a beautifying tool. Uh, I think there's a couple problems with that. First of all, the idea that beauty and smooth skin are synonymous, they're definitely not. And there's also not a proactive need to go in and beautify anybody uh, when we are color grading. So I don't tend to use or think of texture pop as like, oh, we need to beautify uh, the skin of our subject in some way. I think of it more as a three-dimensional tool that I can use to change the feeling of a person's skin and the feeling actually in this case of kind of the overall contrast of the image. Let me show you what I mean. Let's go over into my effects tab. And I've already got my uh, texture pop here at the ready. And I'm going to drop this into the lower kind of secondaries branch of my node graph here. And here's how I will use this. If I'm pulling in the texture pop, I'm not going to bother with the simple operating mode. If I wanted a single slider or a, a more 
confined or limited set of adjustments, I would probably simply be working my midtone detail down here in my primaries. So I'm not going to bother with the simple operating mode. I'm going to go into advanced. And as you can see, when I go into this, I essentially have these different what are called frequency bands that I can operate on. So let's do some weird stuff first, just to give you a sense for how this tool works. If I were to crank my tiny slider all the way to the right, you can see that all of the little tiny textures and variations between uh, adjacent pixels are really being enhanced and drawn out. And in the right context, again, maybe like a food commercial or something, maybe that's exactly what's needed. Uh, but in the case of this image, I don't think it's doing me any favors. And you can see like, to go back to our point of uh, unnatural renderings, this is literally creating texture and contrast in adjacent pixels of a color patch on a color checker. That's a pretty good cue, not only to yourself as the colorist, but also to the end viewer that something unnatural is happening when you are creating like that much texture in a plane that we have a reasonable expectation should be uniform uh, in terms of color and texture. So that's a great example of how I wouldn't use the texture pop tool of just cranking a frequency uh, and doing something really unnatural feeling. But here's something that I might want to try in this uh, image. Like I said, it feels a little bit high contrast. We've turned that adjustment that we made up in the ratio node off. And what I could do as a way of kind of taming that contrast or that feeling of kind of harshness on my subject skin is I could go to my rough slider here and just start to pull that off to the left. And what's funny is when you make these adjustments because they're coming in rather slowly, they're not that obvious until you go off and then back on. So I've actually preserved my contrast ratio here. I haven't directly adjusted my contrast, but I've ended up smoothing the texture really specifically of my subject's skin. That's where I notice it most. But I've also ended up with a perceptual sort of mellower contrast curve. So that's one way that I would use the texture pop to modify uh, the texture of a subject's skin without it necessarily being about beautifying or smoothing or retouching as it's sometimes called. Uh, I think that has limited application uh, in color grading. And my question, uh, whenever the discussion of should we smooth this or that comes up, my question is always, well, why? What are we looking to get out of that? Uh, if it's a just an aesthetic preference for smoothness or uniformity of skin, I would tell you straight up if we were to bring it up and that were the reason, I would say, well, that's not a preference that I share with you. I actually think that texture and variance in skin is beautiful and very human. So that's something that you can do, something that if I get a vote, I don't always get a vote when I'm working with clients, but if I get a vote, I'm generally gonna steer away from, all right? Let's go over to our next clip here. Another image where, you know, great example, like is the if, if I go in with the agenda of smoothing out my subject's skin and turning it into a uniform plane, all I'm gonna do is mess things up and make the image look strange. We've talked about this a lot on the channel here recently. We wanna make sure that we are not solving a problem that is actually worse than the problem it is solving, if that makes sense. So in the case of an image like this, I really wouldn't touch the texture pop at all, probably. Something you can do with it, especially when you're trying out this tool and getting used to it initially, I encourage you to drop it into your node graph, go into the advanced mode, and just swing these sliders all around and look at what they do. For your image that's going to give you the best possible practice and the best sense for how you can use them and you could go in with an image like this and just see like hey if i just kind of intuitively naively move like move my sliders around can i get a better feeling result than i had a moment ago and what i'll generally tell you in my experience your mileage may vary my experience is i'm generally not going to work anything except for my rough and my coarse sliders medium small fine and tiny tend to make adjustments that don't feel particularly naturalistic to my eye. However, in this case, I just broke my own rule and I nudged those things around a little bit. And maybe this is an interesting reproduction. This is actually a little bit more resolved of a reproduction than I had before. And maybe that's a nice touch. Maybe that uh, is sort of uh, inviting me uh, into uh, the image a little bit more and making for a more uh, compelling subject. I'm not so sure. But that could be an interesting way to arrive at a good result with the texture pop is just to throw it on and work your sliders and turn it off and on. And like I said at the beginning of this video, be mindful more than anything that you're doing something invisible. So if you're doing something that is clearly an effect or clearly something that you have applied to the image, great cue to just back off, restart, try again. But as long as you're doing something that is not overtly obvious, then it's really just a question of taste. And just because we are 
adjusting skin and we are playing with texture, it doesn't mean we necessarily have to be softening skin. And just because I tell you, you are often gonna get best results by focusing on these two sliders, doesn't mean those are the only two sliders that you can focus on. And I wanna look at one more example here. Let's go over here to shot number five. And I'm just gonna reset the work that I was doing a little while ago and walk you through it uh, here in real time. So I've already hit some contrast and some balance on this image just to get it into a, a better foundational place. And that same trick that we looked at here in shot number two, is probably gonna work pretty nicely here. It's just a way of like, you know, this is a, again, a fairly high contrast scene. And to give a little bit of context, if we go back to the time level of, of our, timeline level rather, of our node graph, and look at my tone foundation, I'm hitting this image with some pretty strong contrast in terms of like, like my creative look. And so while I could at the individual clip level be fighting that at every turn and backing off on contrast, this texture pop is another really good tool for kind of managing, if we zoom out and we think even broader terms than contrast, if we just think about the sharpness or the softness of our image, whether that's textural or tonal in nature, those things interact a ton. If we just think about wanting to soften the image in a broadest possible sense, this same kind of maneuver of focusing on the rough and the coarse sliders can get you really, really good results. And I, I just think it's cool. Like, look at the histogram. My actual contrast isn't really changing, but perceptually the spatial contrast, the amount of micro contrast between adjacent pixels is definitely changing when I apply this. So I think this is a really nice way of preserving or sticking with some strong contrast, but finessing the way that that contrast treats uh, our subjects' faces, which generally, if we have people in the frame, they are the most important thing in the frame. So it doesn't matter how cool your look is, if it is not serving your subject, or if your subject is still in need of some love, we definitely want to uh, give that to them. So this is another example of uh, where using these bottom two sliders is giving me the ability to kind of retain strong overall contrast, but also uh, to get a, a little bit more of a I would say kind of a matte rendering uh, almost on the subject. So that's the way that I use the texture pop tool. As I said, there are lots of different ways that you could use this. And unfortunately, most of the ways, if you look at all the potential positions of these sliders and s objects in a frame that you could apply this tool to, most of those ways are going to be problematic because they're going to be obvious. Like anytime you move any of these sliders off to the right, pretty quickly things are gonna look really, really strange. So it's a tool that I do use. It's a tool that has great application uh, in cases like we're looking at here, but it's a tool that I use very carefully. And when in doubt, this is a good rule of thumb in general, but especially when you're working with texture, when in doubt, take whatever you did. If you're like, am I getting away with that? Is that feeling a little like obvious? When in doubt, cut it in half, just do 50%. You're still gonna have a meaningful adjustment from where you started, but if you cut it in half, you stand a much better chance of uh, taking an adjustment that might be starting to feel obvious and really tucking it in and concealing uh, your brush strokes so that the end viewer is not aware that a colorist came in and touched the footage because that's no fun. None of us want to do that. We want to work invisibly. We want to be ninjas. So I hope that uh, is a helpful walkthrough on how I use the texture pop tool. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you enjoy content on color grading, learning more about uh, the color page inside of DaVinci Resolve, remember to subscribe, remember to turn on your notifications. And if you want to go deeper on any of the stuff that we talk about in these videos here on the channel, make sure to join us for my Friday live session, Grade School. We do a one hour Q&A where you can come in with a, whatever topics, whatever questions you want to discuss on the things that we've been going over and I will do my best to answer every single one of them live in the room in a resolve session. So I hope to see you there. And if not, then we'll see you here on YouTube for the next video.